a letter to myself not to be opened until the 29th of September 1998. Dear Mal, happy 27th birthday. How does it feel to be 27? Are you happy? Have you done something with your life? Do you remember being 17 when suddenly your life was turned upside down? As I write, that year of my life is coming to an end. There is a beginning, and that was Christmas, my favourite part of the year, when I always spent my time on the beach, swimming and mucking around without worrying about anything much. But then, that's when the unexpected always happens, I guess. Room, love. Move in, Dad. Smile, everyone. One more. Mom? Mom! Molly cooked the worst hey, pancakes for lunch. It didn't stop you eating them, Joe. I think like a few visitors to cheer you up, eh? You could say that. Uh, Mr. Mullins, can we have a word, please? Well, it's a, it's a tricky one. We did some more tests this morning. Exactly what it is or how bad it is. Well, we won't know until we get the results of the tests. She could be fine. We'll have a home to you soon. Come on, Steve, smile for But she's going to need constant care and nursing. For a while, anyway. When will you be coming home, Mum? For a while. That's good. Yeah. Well, uh, I'll leave you to it. Don't hesitate to call me if there's anything you want to discuss. Thanks, Doctor. Smarty pants. Cut it out, you two. I did the washing up today. Don't worry, Dad. We'll work something out. I've got one last photo left. Come on, Mummy. Pull a funny face. Oh no, the 
film stand. Anyway, I'm going to get a routine together. Mum's always been so disorganised. So what's wrong? Never meant to plan, I guess. No, stupid, with your mum. Oh, uh, Hodgkin's disease? Well, it's, it's something to do with the lymph nodes, the glands. They've done all these tests and the, the doc reckons every reason to be hopeful. Jeez, they don't sound good. You know what? Probably means they don't know what they're doing. You're great help, Helen. No worries. What are friends for? <laughs> anyway, we could leave school. Jeez, check out the time. I've got to get to work. Friggin' sand. Now listen, Mum. I know you. You got no drive, right? Now you ring me up sometime, we'll go out. I'll look after you. And you gotta get yourself a boyfriend, right? Now you make sure and ring me, Mum. The decision to leave school was easy. I never considered myself a great student, so I didn't think I'd miss it much. In fact, I was looking forward to taking care of the family, and it all seemed quite exciting knowing I'd be free of teachers and homework. Convincing Mum was the main worry. Have you been awake long, Mum? Where have you been, Fizz? Alan had his breakfast. I don't want him going off without having something to eat. Um. Oh, Mum. I decided I'm, I'm going to leave school. It's out of the question, Fee. Mum, someone's got to keep an eye on Alan and Joe. And he's going to look after you. We'll manage. Your father will just have to... Mum, get real. Dad can't do much working nights and sleeping all day. Mum, it's going to get up to 38 degrees today. Wow! It's 34 degrees in here already. Is that all? Feels like 100. Yeah, well, 34 degrees Celsius is almost the equivalent of 100 degrees on the Fahrenheit scale. Alan, Mum doesn't need a science lesson now. Mum, Mally won't take me to the science Mum, I could close the nations. That'd make it cool. No, that won't do. See, on this chart... Dad's says note that... says, Dear Phoebe, Judy can go to the science but she must help you first. Please remember my dry cleaning, and here's the docket to money. Hope Mummy has a good day. Love, Dad. Fear not, for I am with the Isaiah 41.10C. Can read Jody. You could swap with me and Steve. Our room's much cooler. See all my charts? I've been experimenting. It's very good of you, Alan, but I think Mum's better off in her own room. It's not fair, Mummy. They could take me. That's enough, Joe. From now on, Fee decides what's best, and you make sure you listen to a young lady. Mum, what about you? Just get me the fan, Alan. And get rid of these. They're a nuisance there. Wish her and Guido would get married and live somewhere And that is no else. longer under discussion, young lady. Now, I'm sure Fee can use a hand in the kitchen. She can help with the washing up. Now. Yes, Mum. And get dressed. I suppose if you go back to school when I'm better, it'll be all right. Have you got some money for the tram and lunch, Mum? In a second, Al. Though why I can't go to the beach like a normal 13-year-old, I don't know. The library's better. No one goes to the library in the holidays. I do. I'll rest my case. Can you give Joe a hand with the dishes? Sorry, Joe. It was the best I could do. I saved most of it, but you'll lose the last few shots. Those were the pictures of Mum in hospital. Oh, don't worry. Joe? That was your Christmas present. So what? Joe? I'm not speaking to you. This was in the hall again. He's too sharp. What do you want for your birthday, Al? Could... Could you just let me have the money? I suppose so. If Guido wants us to go to his place later. Oh. Guido is evil. He's a thief. That one she gave Molly for Christmas, he didn't buy that. So what would you know, smarty? 
Steve, every time you swear or do evil, it's just hammering your nails in all over again. What the hell are you yabbering about, Alan? You're evil too. Steve, leave him alone. Isn't that naked lady on the wall? It's disgusting. Disgusting? You can't even see your chest. Of course. It must be a bottom that bothers you. How stupid of me. You can put these in the bathroom. And you can come and help me make some sandwiches for your lunch. I bet sandwiches is all we're going to get from now on. Yes. And I'll tell you both another thing. From now on, this family's going to be happy, happy, happy. The chances of that are too... infinitesimally remote to be calculated. When the night has come And the land is dark And the moon is the only light you see no, I won't be afraid No, I won't shed a tear Just as long as you stand, stand by me Darling, darling, stand by me Oh, won't you stand by me Won't you stand, stand, stand by me What do you think? You like it? Yeah, it's great. Yeah, but we didn't write it. It's better than that rubbish we do now, man. Yeah, but we don't want to do 60s songs. We agreed. You might have, but I didn't. Well, I think Guido's right. Well, don't you reckon? Playing our own material is why we got together in the first place. It doesn't mean anything otherwise. Yeah, but it's a good song, so he gives the stuff who wrote it. We well, do. Anyway, who cares what you think? Well, it used to. Yeah, well, maybe things have changed. So I've noticed. Steve, are we rehearsing or what? Don't hassle me, all right? Well, do love ain't enough. Dag with the junk on the floor. We died. <laughs> Stupid, really. Reckon. And freaking Guido. I reckon you're wasting your time. He's a creep. So has he ever kissed you? Thought so. Listen, Mull, there's plenty of other fish in the sea. Yeah, maybe there's someone else. Maybe I should just screw up the courage and ask him out. Maybe you should just screw. <laughs> and hang around that flat day in, day out, slaving away and getting no real thanks for it. And don't you say I told you so. Me? I'm not going to open my mouth. And to top it all off, I get notes like this. Dear Phoebe, 
I heard Alan coughing. Tell him to keep the radiator going while he studies. His room is cold and he must stop worrying about the expense all the time. That is not a child's problem. Also, please phone the agent again about the leaking roof. He who loves purity of heart and whose speech is gracious will have the king as his friend. Proverbs 22.11. Love your father. Jeez, I thought my old man was bad. Look, I've done it all before he notices anything's wrong. Oh, mate, I reckon you should get another family, trade them in or something. Yeah. Maybe I should keep a diary, but flog it and make a mint. <laughs> Keeping a diary bore me to friggin' death. <laughs> Life's boring enough just doing it without having to write about it as well. Maybe you're right. Grotty things. I've got to stop smoking, Helen, for I can't. Don't give me any more, even if I ask for it. I reckon you need a break, Mum. Why don't we go out tonight? I can't. We've got to do this prayer meeting with Dad and the kids. We have to go every Friday night. You don't have to do nothing. Just make up some excuse. Mm, no, I don't know, Helen. Go on. You'll think of something. You're good at making things up. What a friend we have in Jesus. Everything you got in prayer. You've already got one person there family not coming to heaven. So you've got to come, Mum. Don't you know when enough's enough? Not now, Joe. There's nothing on. Please don't play up tonight. There's always something on. Don't you butt into this. What you mean is she's not allowed to watch it. What'd I say, Al? You lay one finger on that young lady and you'll be sorry. Stop her, Mel. She's gonna scream. <laughs> Shh. Oh, Joe, I'm sorry. Shh. What's the matter in here? Go. Stop crying and get off my feet. And while we're all here, there'll be a lot less noise around this flat while I'm trying to sleep. Is that clear? Yes, Dad. Molly's not coming to the meeting with us. Don't be silly. Of course she is. Helen's sick, Dad, so I said that I'd go and sit with her because her parents had to go to a wedding. For a wedding? The matter is no longer under discussion. What do you have to pick a movie for kids for, Mal? Jesus, you're a worry sometimes. Yeah, well, maybe we should have just gone for a coffee and a talk or something. Nah, it does you good to get out and have a good time. Hey, let's go to Tony's. George is working there tonight. Hang on, Helen, I don't think Stop I... Stop worrying. Try to walk fast, Mel. And try not to look like a hooker, will ya? All those girls with the lovely curvy swirls All the playboys with the cars they do like toys they love a girl one mile from home It's such a waste of time to go to Rome Those new machines Hey there, George! They make hot little birds Hey, George! If you talk, they may assist you in a fall Am I the activist I once believed in? Have I the right to say these things? Get Mum and me a couple drinks, would you? Bye, Mum. You grab that table, Mum. I've just got to get to the loo. I think I'm drowning, having dinner with the sheep. A working class lad has no right to shirk it. And it all ends up in tears. It all ends up in tears. Hello. Here's Mel, isn't it? I think Larry's okay here. 
Amal, Paul. I'd like you to meet one of my best students, or should I say ex-students, Phoebe Mullins. Mal, this is Paul. Pleased to meet you, Phoebe. Cigarette? Yeah. So, uh, what are you doing with yourself? What are you up to apart from rolling your own? Oh, oh you know, helping at home and that. And are you coming back to school? No, I, I, I wanted to leave, really, Mr. Larry. Larry. I'm very sorry to hear that, Mum. Well, crikey, it's Mr. Lane. G'day. G'day, Helen. G'day. Hello, Helen. Friggin' place was packed, just left to cross my legs. Mum, here's our address. Mm -hmm. Come on. Oh. See ya. Jeez, I'm glad they've gone. It's in okay, Mum? Oh. Drink up. Come, Mal, enjoy yourself for heaven's sake. It'll do you the world of good. You'll see. That's all. <gasps> you know what I reckon? I reckon us women don't drink enough. <gasps> Every time George gets drunk, he gets as horny as hell. You look awful. Why don't you wear makeup or something? The early morning get up and go show. It's nice to have you with us today. It's going to be absolutely incredible. Fine and sunny and a top of 40 degrees. Wow. Makes you feel good, doesn't it? Hey, Alan, guess what? I've got you two dollars for your trip to the planetarium today. Alan, did you hear what I said? I don't need it. I've still got some of what you and Steve gave me. I didn't put it all into the special offering. That's why God's punishing me. Why well, I'm being made to wet the bed. What special offering? If you'd been coming to the meetings, you'd understand. It was for the starving kids in Ethiopia. But I kept five dollars back. Oh. That was your birthday present. Don't you understand anything, Mum? I wanted it to be my sacrifice. Well, that's exactly what it was. Now, let's have no more talk about punishment, right? Alan, anyone can wet the bed. It was an accident. Who wet the bed? I hate you, Mum! What's happening? Alan wet the bed. He's got some crazy idea that God's trying to punish him. Well, what are we going to do? Search me. I knew that religious stuff would get to one of us sooner or later. Steve, this is serious. Look, it's beginning to really screw him up. He'll be okay, Mole. That's too much. Just like Mum. You're just like Dad. Ignore it and it'll go away. Uh, Mum. Mum had warned me not to expect much help from Steve. But then Mum's illness was starting to confuse me. One minute she'd be up and about the next back in bed. When she was well, everything was great, and we really began to get close for the first time. Alan was always a strange one. Sister at the house centre said he'd grow out of his bedwetting and imaginary friends. Oh, stop fooling around, Fee. It's too modern for me. Let's cut it before it gets too long. No, oh, it looks great up. Makes you look pretty. Oh, don't be silly. Anyway, it's starting to annoy me. Well, I'll leave it up for today, then. Dr. Graham. I think you've got a real crush on him. Oh. That's why you're perking up. <laughs> anyway, sister was right. Alan did grow out of it, but not before I had to put my foot down a few times. How did you put your foot down? I got your father to threaten him with a spanking if there was any more nonsense. Well, it does look quite nice. Well, good job. You could be a hairdresser. 
probably should have to go back to school when I'm better, but it's a good career, hairdressing. No, no, I'm not hairdressing. You've got to give it some thought, Fee. This is no life for you at your age. At any age. Mum, stop worrying about me. What are we going to do about Alan? You know, Fee, my biggest mistake was worrying too much about all you kids. If Alan gives you any trouble, just let your father handle it. Been good to you. Have you just now taken the step to be water baptized? Brother, I now baptize you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Try and get her up on her feet as much as possible, especially into the sun. No, I'd give that a miss today. It gets pretty depressing lying around all the time. She's doing so good. She went downhill yesterday and today she's up again. Yeah, well, it's a pretty weird illness, Hodgkin's disease. It's up and down all the time. The main thing is to keep her busy, keep her mind ticking. But look, uh, don't you get too disheartened. I know it's hard, but you're doing a great job. Okay? Doesn't look like it's going to ease off any. I'll see you next week. I'm taking a turn for the worst, eh, Molly? Because I remember three years ago when my brother had it. Look what I found. Grand Berg when she was your age. Hasn't she got a good face? Strong and proud. I want you to have it. You're very chirpy today. I was right about you and Dr. Graham. Oh, rubbish, V. <laughs> man's a flirt. He winked at me. Oh, come off it, Mum. You love it. And you, if I were a few years younger, it's quite a punk now, Dr. Graham. Spunk, Mum, not punk. Oh, spunk, right. You're hysterical sometimes. Mm. Your father used to love flowers. Didn't know that, did you? Reminds me of the autumn we got married. Mm. Fee, are you on the pill? What? Wasn't there a boy you liked? That friend of Steve's. What was his name? Guido? What brought this on? We talked about sex in my day. It's okay. I don't mean what you hear in the schoolyard. I mean feelings. Well, what are you getting at? I just don't want you to end up with the first boy you meet, Fee. Not like me and Frank.
I live under the rocks. Well, they do not. Your eyes have to adjust to the darkness. See that white stuff? Penguin poo. Not oh, seagull poo. Oh, I see. What a funny little thing. Look at him. How have I only seen him in pictures? Come on, let's get back. You know, I thought I wanted to spend my birthday alone. But it was nice you turned up. Your birthday? Oh, why didn't you tell us we could have had a party? No, or we could still have one. No, look, I hate parties. Me and Steve will just get drunk tonight or something. A sensible celebration for a 17-year-old. <sighs> You're a good friend, Mum. Come on, I'll walk home. Hey, listen, why don't you come out with me and Steve tonight? Yeah, no, I don't know. Steve doesn't like me. Mum, it's my birthday. You know, I want you to come. Look, if you didn't want me to come, you should have said. Leave it out, Mum. I said it was okay. You got your period or something. You've got no idea, have you? I never get to see you guys anymore. Look, I don't even know how to talk to you. Well, whose fault's that? Ah, <laughs> I felt like someone had hit me in the stomach. Now I knew why Steve hadn't wanted me around. As for Guido, it was like he wanted me to see it. I knew I couldn't talk to Dad about it, and I wasn't going to worry Mum. Then I thought of one person who might be able to help. Mal, how lovely. Come in. Hey, you're just in time to come out to lunch. Lunch? No, no, no. I, I just... No arguments? I'll, uh, I'll just get my coat. Paul! Hi, Mal. We won't be long. Just take a seat. I'll, I'll come back another time just to talk about Steve and... We'll talk about him over lunch. My share. Rosemount Chardonnay, table five. <laughs> <laughs> sir, are you finished? Finished, sir? Thank you. May I uh, offer you the dessert menu? You know what? Madam? Oh. Stop it. Look, 
I'm, I'm sorry about asking for chips earlier. I know it must have sounded really daggy. It's just that we always have chips with, with the fish at home. Listen, Mel, it's OK. Stop putting yourself down, all right? <laughs> Sounds just like Mum. Well, good. Look, Molly, in your situation, it's really easy to get into a rut, and you've got to fight that. Larry, it's OK. Well, it's fun, it's easy. It gets a bit boring and difficult at times, but... Yeah, but what about when it gets boring all the time? What are you going to do then? Larry, I'm not going to go back to school if that's what you're getting at. That's not what I'm getting at. Listen, you used to write great essays. Do something creative, write something. What about? Hmm. Anything. Creative energy is the only thing that separates us from the meaninglessness of the human struggle. Do you understand what I mean, Mo? More wine? No, no. So, uh, what's all this business about Steve? Oh, no, it's okay. I'll give you some creative energy on it. start, Guido? I mean, what got him into it? Who knows why anyone gets into that stuff? Well, what are we going to do about it, then? All we can do is give him some time and just hope he'll come around. It's one of the reasons I've got him in my place, so I can keep an eye on him. Keep an eye on him? You're full of it. He didn't do dope till he moved in with you. Jeez, no, give us a chance. You knew they were going to shoot up that night and you didn't do a thing about it. Hey, neither did you. Well, when's wedding? Want your ice cream, Guido? Society tells us that homosexuality is an acceptable part of our subculture. Society claims that it's just another search for real love. But you won't find real love in sex. The only way you'll find real love is to come back to the source of real love. And that's Jesus! Be not deceived. Neither fornicators nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminates, nor abusers of themselves with mankind shall inherit the kingdom of God. The Lord couldn't make it any plainer. There will be no homosexuals in heaven. Praise God. for me. If we go out as a family, we come home as a family. I'm not going again. I beg your pardon, young lady? I said I'm not going again.
Come on, Fee, don't be silly. Something's bothering you. Now tell me about it. It's nothing, Mum. I've, I've just got a couple of things on my mind, that's all. about walking out of the meeting. No, she didn't say a lot. I feel sorry for Dad. I suppose this religious stuff is okay for him. At least he doesn't drink anymore. But I am worried about what it's doing to Alan. Is he back on it again? No, uh, he's just drunk. Not drugs? No drugs, Mum. I told you. We went home to talk to you. Ending, so why don't you call it a day when you're ahead? That's a good idea, son. You must be good and tired after today. Oh, but we never get a bit early in the holidays. Tomorrow is the first day of my holiday, too. We could get up early, hire a boat, and go fishing. What do you think? Fishing is cruel. I didn't know you liked fishing, Dad. Well, we don't have to catch anything if that's upsetting you. We could just go for the ride. Anyway, Jesus was a fisherman. A fisher of souls, Dad. There is a difference. Well, his disciples. I don't want to go. I mean, it's nice of you to want to take me, but I just won't have the time. I've got a lot of study to do these holidays. You condescending little creep. 
How dare you patronise Dad like that? No one has that much study to do at your age. But Alan, why can't you behave like a normal person? <coughs> you said that for God's sake, give me a glass of water! Dad, stop hitting him! You're only making it worse! Oh, my goodness <laughs> sake! What's going on? Everything's okay, Mum. What's the matter with that? Come on, Mum, back to bed. Night, Alan. Don't forget your prayers, son. Night, Dad. Tell Mummy I'll pray for her. Tell her it's God's promise. If we have faith, she'll get better. Yeah, OK. Now you pop into bed now. I'll see you in the morning. Could be a happy family. Mm -hmm. Constantly undermined me. Undermined you? Frank. I get no respect, no support. Well, you expect if you keep filling their heads with this religious nonsense? Nonsense? My religion is a great comfort to me. Dad? It was a good idea, Dad. What? About Alan and the fishing. Don't give up on it. I think we should get Dr. Graham to take a look at Alan. He's far too emotional for a boy of his age. Maybe he's just growing too fast. Maybe he needs extra vitamins, I don't know. Would you deal with that, please, Fee? I'm very tired. I'm going to bed. Okay? Put your hand there on the rail. Come on. Let me try. Oh, I'm sorry, Fee. It's okay. It's my fault. He's not supporting me. All he wants is a happy family. Take it easy, Mum. How can this family be happy? Mum, stop. Lock of feeling to emotional cripples. No wonder Alan's like he is. <laughs> Help me! <laughs> Don't cry. It's not enough time. Please don't say that, Mummy. very tired. They're giving her this treatment, you see, called chemotherapy. And it makes her feel sick. But soon she'll be better than she ever was. They can't be much of a treatment if it makes you feel sicker. How lovely. The whole family. Mummy, Molly said I can look after your room till you come home. Thank you, darling. 
Are you feeling better? Much better, love. See, I told you. That's because I've been praying for you, Mum. And I'm going to keep praying and never give up my faith. And then you'll be home soon. It's, it's a very nice thought, dear. When are you coming home, Mum? Mum will be coming home when God makes her better, Jodie. Throwing them out. Well, they're asking me. You talking about your cuttings, Dad? You're in a box on the fridge. This is just another example of this family's selfishness. I wanted to study those. You knew they were important to me, Phoebe. It's just not fair. Why isn't the shower fixed? Don't you think I'm annoyed too, Alan? I've rung the agent a hundred times. I am all sweaty now. How can I go and see Mum if I'm all sweaty? You're not the only one who has showers in this house. So, who took Dad's box off the fridge? Phoebe, I can forgive you for throwing them out, but I can't stand lies and subterfuge. Dad, I did not chuck out your stupid cuttings! Phoebe! Sorry. I needed a box one day. I took it off the fridge. It only had piles of old paper in it. Well, there you go then. It was an accident. You can forgive accidents, can't you, Dad? His brother Baxter outlawed those as well. Today was my birthday. Joe and Alan remembered, of course, but Dad's been avoiding me all day. I'm surprised Steve didn't remember. But I guess living at Guido's, he forgets family occasions now. I feel awful about breaking down in front of Dad. I know it can't be good for Jodie and Alan to see me like that, especially now Mum seems to be getting even sicker. I know Mum could die, and I'm preparing myself for it. But tonight I feel scared, afraid and alone. You're not alone anymore. Where do you come from? Happy birthday, sis. You remembered? What is it? Oh, plum brandy. I'll get some glasses. No, don't open it now. We've, uh... We've got something else for you. It's a surprise. You sure you know how to drive this? Of course I do. Better than the owner. <laughs> Birthday, Molly. Happy Mel, Mel. <laughs> well, I don't know. How strong is it? I was really sick last time. This is your pure homegrown dope, Mel. You'll love it. <laughs> well, okay, why not? What a great place. It's a great place to mull away the time. Hey, Mel. We've uh, we've written a song for you. Another cold and lonely night And we all turn out as one You've got your heart there lying in your hands Always looking there for another just like you Hold on, hold on may be lonely, but you're never alone. You've got to hold on, hold on. You're just another in this nightly sway. And you suffer in your silence. As lovers walk so not too long. And their laughter fills the alleyway. Seems that love has finally found you out. Hold on, hold on. 
may be lonely, but you're never alone. You got to hold on, hold on. You're just another in this nightly sway. Ellen. Hey, it's clean now. Come on off to bed. Listen, you, you don't have to do any of it if you don't want to. But you can have an abortion. No way. George wouldn't hear of it. <sighs> Helen, he doesn't have to have the baby. Is it absolutely certain? Yeah, of course it is. What do you think? You think I go making this up or something? Anyway, that's not the most important thing. The thing is, George and me is going to get married. Well... I want the baby, Mal, really. It's just that everything's happening so fast that scares me. You know, if me and George could just get married quietly, without all the big deal. You know there's going to be a thousand rallies. The whole works. Well, listen, Mum. Would you be real upset if I didn't ask you to be bridesmaid? You know, what with my sisters and my cousins and that. No sweat. I understand. You are pleased for me, aren't you, Mum? Of course I am, Helen. If it's what you want, I am. Sister Molly. Oh, you mean we should speak normally? This is my sister Molly. <laughs> I've learned to say the alphabet. Hello, goodbye. What's the time? Where do you live? And would you like a cup of tea? Well, what's the sign for would you like a cup of tea? I felt so embarrassed. I almost spilt the cup of tea over him as well. It must be difficult for him, but he seems quite happy. Seeing as how he asked me out, maybe I should learn sign language. It'd be a bit hard writing notes all the time, especially in bed. But then if we were in bed, we wouldn't be talking. Molly, you're disgusting. <laughs>
over now. Do you want to talk about it? It's always better when you tell about it. Man. What a warning. A warning from God. I don't get it, Alan. I haven't wet the bed this time. Something worse. A sin. Alan, it's not a sin. It is. It's absolutely perfectly normal. Alan, look at me. Everybody does it, right? Girls have periods and boys have wet dreams. It's part of growing up. The first, it's, it's scary. It's different for everyone. Sometimes it's scary and sometimes it's not. Alan, if it didn't happen, there'd be something wrong. That's all I can say. Can you please pass me my dressing gown, Molly? So now you know. I wanted to tell you, but I couldn't. It's okay. It doesn't matter. Now give me one of your smokes, you rat bag. Sit down, Mal. You're making me nervous. Mum, isn't it? She's worse. No, it's Alan. What's up? He thinks he's abnormal. You had this nightmare. It's just all really beginning to get to me. He thinks it's a sin. Look, there are some things I just can't help him with. You know what I'm talking about? No, I, I don't. Nocturnal emissions, you moron. Oh, now look what you've done, you half-wit. Who's a half-wit? You are. Look at the mess you've made. Oh, it'll give you something to clean up later, won't Nick it? off. You clean it up. I'm sorry. I should never have disturbed you. Hang on, Mull. I didn't say I wouldn't help. I'll try and come over tonight. Mull! See? Not long. I was just wishing I'd brought you in some new flowers. How are they all? Good, good. Um, I tried one of your new pudding recipes last night. The kids said they were sick of ice cream. <laughs> Did Dad tell you they're, um, they're quitting meetings for a while? I think that'll help. Shivers! Mum, you know 
what's wrong with Ellen? And nothing can help him. I'm so scared. Children will be all right. It's inbuilt defences or something in childhood. It's your father's the one that'll find it hard to forgive himself. That'll be the hardest part for you. So strong, Faye. <laughs> if I didn't have that to depend on, I wouldn't be so easy about dying. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father. And he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. And now let's pray and ask God to comfort Mummy in her sickness and take away her pain. And help us be brave and strong, even if... Has God ever broken a promise that we know of? Uh, sometimes, Ellen, uh, what we think is a promise from God is what, what we hope for. Sometimes it's not clear to us poor humans that what's for the best. And Mummy has been sick for such a long time now. Ellen, I, I know it's very hard to understand. Why? I'll tell you why, Dad. Because if you had have told Alan and Joe the truth in the beginning, mm -hmm. instead of all this junk about heaven and angels, we might be able to deal with the situation now. Dad, there's only stars up there. Friggin' great stars and black holes in space. You shouldn't swear, Molly. Alan, faith is trusting that God knows best.
to help. Let's go. They haven't covered it yet. <laughs> but they will do. They will. Dad, why don't you lie down? Come on, I'll help you up onto the bed. Come on! Yeah, lay there. Yeah, lay there. All right, stay there then. Be really uncomfortable.
You know, I was really afraid I'd have to keep on leaving you notes until you left home for good. And Steve. It really upsets me that he hasn't talked to me about him and Guido. I had a mate once when I was about 19. Nothing sexual. But in many ways, I think I was closer to him than I've ever been to anybody. Steve. He told your mother in confidence about him and Guido, so there's nothing I could say or... Do you know what I mean? I just want him to be happy. I want you all to be happy. I just wish I could get near him so I could talk to him. Dad, you never let any of us near you. You've always been down on us. Everything we did was never good enough. Fee, I... And as for Alan, no one but me has done anything for Alan for the whole year. As for the rest of you, nothing but trouble and problems. I tried. I tried, Dad. I just had it. From now on, you can run this family. I quit. I'll see you when I see you. Coming back home was the hardest thing. I liked him a lot, but I want to sort this out for myself. Dad has to start taking responsibility for Alan and Joe. I know that as long as I'm around, he'll still leave everything up to me, despite his best intentions. I just don't know how to help Dad anymore. At least he's given the religious nonsense away. But his drinking worries me. Well, he went back to work last night, so maybe that'll help. Morning. If it wasn't for Joe and Alan, I would leave. Even though I'm surprised at how well they've handled Mum's death, I know they need me now more than ever. I miss Mum. Molly, shouldn't we be doing some shopping? You got bread and butter from the milk bay yesterday. Mum, well, I'm sick of toast. I'll go up the street if you give me some money. Alan, haven't been to the bank, OK? Ask Dad. You ask him. I'm not going to that room. It's a reaction, Alan. He's missing Mum. So am I. I don't know if you get drunk. Stephen Joe were here. Nick off, Alan. He's smoking too much. Molly, the money? OK, I'll go to the bank in a minute, right? It's Saturday. Jeez. Oh, go like the gas heater. I'll ask Dad for the money.
What are you doing, Phoebe? Oh, I need some money, Dad. I gave Jody ten dollars yesterday. She's at the Simonsons. Alan left hospital the other day, and Dr. Graham said he'll be fine, which is a big relief. Jodie said a funny thing about Alan. She said his burnt face made him look like a little kid from one side and an old man from the other. Pretty good description of Alan at any time, I think. Steve's been great with Alan. I think they're finally starting to like each other. Even Dad's making an effort. We must be doing something right. He's managed to talk Steve into staying home for a while. I doubt if we'll see much of him, though. He and Guido are even more inseparable now that the band's getting work. And Jim's been very supportive. He's like one of the family. He gets on well with everyone, even Dad. From next week, Dad works day shift, which is good. He'll have to spend far more time with Joe and Alan, because I've definitely decided to go back to school. I thought about getting a job, but I don't want to end up in a dead-end situation like a lot of people I know. So anyway, I'm really determined to do something with my life. I'm not sure what, but as Mum used to say, if you know what matters and what doesn't, you can't go far wrong. I can see all.